Thanks for joining us today as we gather to explore the dark corners of the supply chain crypt. My name is Andrew Bowden. I'm the Senior Manager of Product Marketing here at TradeGecko. Before joining TradeGecko, I spent over 10 years in the advanced analytics space, working with retailers, manufacturers, and CPG companies. When I'm not spending my time thinking about e-commerce and supply chain ecosystems, I'm usually piloting drones or hiking with my wife and our dog. In the spirit of Halloween, I thought we'd try something a little different for this webinar. Rather than focusing on unicorn brands who seem to have it all figured out, I wanted to take the time to highlight brands who thought that they had everything running smoothly. Business was up and sales had never been better until a ghastly apparition appeared in their supply chains. Looking back at a number of these companies, you might wonder how they didn't begin to identify the signs of ghosts lurking in their supply chains. Hindsight, they say, is 2020. And with the right tools and business sense, foresight can get you pretty close to 2020 as well. So let's venture forth into the supply chain crypt and see what lies around the next dark corner. Don't forget your flashlight. In our first tale, we'll hear about Boeing's grounded dream. While we all probably remember the very public battery fiascos that grounded Boeing 787 in its early days, there were a myriad of other ghosts that haunted Boeing throughout their Dreamliner's production process. When Boeing announced the 787 Dreamliner, they set about to recast the mold in the airline industry from traveler experience to carrier operational efficiencies and production speeds across manufacturing. They hailed this across-the-board improvement as the Dreamliner effect. The plane itself is a marvel of engineering. Constructed almost entirely of composite materials, it was designed to be 20% more fuel efficient than its predecessors. To speed up production of the aircraft, Boeing assigned global subcontractors to construct the aircraft's sub-assemblies and ship them to their factory in Washington for final assembly. Wings were assembled in Japan, stabilizers in Italy and Korea, and fuselage sections in the United States. In theory, this would result in a leaner, simpler assembly line and lower inventory costs for Boeing's Washington facility. Working with so many suppliers requires an expert level of coordination with and between each subcontractor. Not only that, Boeing had to trust that each subcontractor was up to the task and was properly managing their documentation, production schedules, and inventory required to meet delivery dates. When the plane was announced, it had more sales orders placed than any previous wide-body airliner ever. This is when the ghosts began to take their form. To meet sales demands, Boeing began to set aggressive production targets, pushing their subcontractors to meet tight delivery deadlines. This placed such a strain on the supply chain that shortcuts were taken to get planes off the factory floor. The first five planes were 5,000 pounds overweight because some suppliers ran low on inventory and had to use heavier materials to keep up with demand. And in some cases, major systems were not installed on time. The next set of delays also came from inventory issues. The number of bolts required to assemble the planes was under forecast to the point where Boeing had to resort to buying additional inventory from the Home Depot rather than their preferred supplier. <clears throat> These delays, along with several others, escalated to a completely revised delivery timeline, which amounted to years of delayed orders and reduced profit margins. A known innovator in their space, Nike has a few skeletons in their closet that they would probably prefer to keep quiet as well. It was early 2000 and Nike was on the brink of launching a new, big blue and complex supply chain planning system. The vendor had painted the rose gold picture of the system operating in its final stage of implementation. Inventory would be present in the right location at the right time in order to meet sales demand with logistics automatically triaged to deploy inventory. Nike execs were so enthralled by their new systems processes that they dove in head first before they were ready, essentially eating all of their candy in one sitting. The result was a $100 million stomachache in revenue shortfall. Nike's problem was that they implemented their system in a big bang approach rather than taking a phased approach to deployment. The launch and system suffered from software integration problems, data quality issues, and an inadequately trained workforce who didn't properly understand how to use the technology. 
Operating on poor data quality, demand forecasts were both under and over recommending order quantities across Nike's tens of thousands of SKUs. And in certain cases, Nike had to slash prices dramatically to clear the inventory in order to offset growing storage costs, which put capital at risk. They later replaced the software with that from another vendor, absorbing the costs of this haunting. <clears throat> it was the night before Christmas of 2004. PlayStation was planning a launch like never before by promising a slimmer PlayStation 2 at every European's door. Now, PlayStation's haunting came through no fault of their own. Their forecasts were accurate, promotions aligned, and they'd scheduled all of their suppliers to deliver on time. While the new PlayStations were on their way to European homes, their supply chain was halted in the Suez Canal. An oil tanker became stuck, blocking the container ship holding all of the PS2s bound for the UK, cutting sales by 90% from weeks prior. This left Sony scrambling to redirect their supply chains, chartering expensive cargo planes to ensure that enough units were available for tens of thousands of excited youngsters. But for many, it was too little too late, and they suffered a Christmas without games, which is a terrible fate. In crypt number four, we hear about Hershey's dark chocolate tale. Hershey's Halloween nightmare hits a little closer to home. Like many candy manufacturers, they earn a significant chunk of their revenues as a result of Halloween. In 1998, they decided to implement a new order management system, supply chain planning system, and CRM system in order to completely transform the company's entire IT infrastructure and supply chain. Similar to Nike, they tried to change everything at once and bit off way more than they could chew. After spending $100 million on software and consulting fees, they timed the go-live date for April of 1999, which in theory would have given them enough leeway to work out any kinks before Halloween orders started to come in. However, scheduling slips caused this date to be pushed back further and further. Rather than wait until the following year, after their most important financial quarter, they decided to go live during the summer of 1999, right before their busiest time of year. As it turned out, this new, untested system had major issues. In many cases, Hershey's had products on the dock but couldn't get transactions to work within their systems, meaning they were unable to put candy onto their trucks and ship it to their customers. Inventory was not visible with their separate order management system for allocation, so orders were not able to be processed. Ultimately, $150 million in orders were missed, causing a 19% drop in profits and a stock tumble from $57 in August of 1999 to $38 by January of 2000. Talk about a bad cavity. So what can we learn from these tales from the supply chain crypt, other than even the mighty can fall? The key takeaways that I teased out of these stories are as follows. High data quality reports and forecasts are essential for informing strategic business decisions when it comes to ensuring that you have the right number of products to meet demand. Boeing and Nike's fiascos highlighted the challenges of putting data directly into the driver's seat, making data-driven decisions, rather than using data to make informed decisions. If you're overhauling your company's infrastructure and taking a phased approach whenever possible, that's the best way to ensure that you mitigate risks associated with implementation errors. Both Hershey and Nike should, have used, should be used as examples of the dangers associated with big bang approaches to transformational change. Taking the time to ensure that your company's various systems and technologies talk to each other is incredibly important. Search out software providers who will provide well-maintained integrations as a part of their platform offering and access to APIs to ensure that no data is lost in translation, like when Hershey's found its order management system unable to speak with its inventory system, costing them millions in lost revenue. And lastly, external factors affecting your supply chain will always present a risk. However, that risk is greater when your supply chain relies on products and supplies having to travel great distances, like with PlayStation's 2004 Christmas fiasco. There are probably ghosts lurking throughout your supply chain. Spend time looking for ways to shed light on them. Mitigating the risks that they are likely to cause could save your business from suffering from the same fate 
of those whose stories now haunt the supply chain crypt. Happy Halloween.